how to keep your songs interesting over time. Hello everyone, welcome to the studio. Bear with me today. I didn't sleep for one and a half, almost two days. I was just sitting here in the studio finishing up another song. It's already quite late. It's it's done. It's finished. This was quite quick. Lost and Broken or Lost and Alone, the song that I did with Robin Vane. It's done. The vocal needs to be re-recorded to get it like extra smooth and make it fit to the song 100%. But that's something for another day. Today we'll stick to a Q&A, you guys asking me everything about music production, DJing, studio, whatever it is, I'll answer and we'll probably get some interesting stuff. Let's start with Meneer. If you could add anything to your studio, what would it be? I got everything I ever wanted, so uh, right now nothing except for maybe a grand piano, but not here downstairs in the recording room, but that's totally unnecessary. I just would love to have one because I, I love the instrument, I love the craftsmanship, so maybe one day. Lampex is asking, what do you do to protect your hearing if you have some hearing loss? How do you compensate it? I don't have any hearing loss. I go to a doctor every year and get tested. I protect my ears whenever I'm anywhere where it's really loud and I try not to listen to music too loud. I sometimes do because it's just fun but I tried then to keep it shorter. Next up, what DMX controller do you use for your LEDs? That's simple. Um, this one right here, Color Chief, just like a hundred bucks, controls all of the lights in the entire studio, any colors possible. How to design proper plugs? And another question by someone else, how to keep your songs interesting over time? Let's maybe, because I just finished that song and I think both I can answer by showcasing the project a little. That's the project right here, just 24 tracks, fairly simple club song, but I love the vibe. I'll play you a little of it in the outro. It's still not 100% finished. I don't know what kind of label to send it to. If you have any suggestion, let me know in the comments. But uh, let's start with like keeping stuff interesting over time. I got the vocal right here, which I absolutely love. And uh, yeah, let's listen to it a little bit. Daily concrete, same routine. Gray machine surrounding me. Artificial air everywhere. I breathe like a... So there is a lot going on. Um, maybe again in context, because it's actually quite subtle in the background. But there is like, there is movement and change, which is really important. Same routine, gray machine surrounding me, artificial air everywhere. I breathe like I'm drowning, look like I'm falling. I feel like I'm not near. And it's really about like constantly things changing. Here it's the vocal, it could be a synthesizer, it could be an effect, it could be a new element that is introduced. Like in, in my opinion, a good song doesn't sound exactly the same in any kind of bar in the song. You could cut up the entire song into bars, put them on top and never find one that is the same as another one. Even a good technical track has like something introduced, moving, maybe a pad rising, maybe cut off open clothes, a hi-hat slowly fading and something, just something that is coming, going, moving. The second it's 100% static, just kick and bass. If it's like longer than four bars, it just, it just starts hurting. So have something in there, create movement. This effect right here is a little more complex. Uh, let's check the dry vocal. In routine, gray machine surrounding me. Artificial air everywhere. And the main thing that creates all of the de delay kind of effects is like the delay designer with a reverb, with a looperator, a sample delay. And that's the automation you see. So it's like stacked effects in a bus, which usually creates something really weird. And then you just pop it in, pop it out and get really something exciting happening. And then the second part about plug sounds, I actually find plug sounds pretty simple and easy and making them interesting. Uh, let's see, the plug sound of this song right here is just like an ARP, of 
course in ARP. Also hear quite a lot of movement, like the, the cut of opening and closing. The sound uh, was just made with Diva. And for these kind of pluck sounds, the most important in my opinion is definitely the envelopes. Like how long are the pluck sounds? Are they really short? You cut down the decay. Are they really short and have a lot of sustain to create more atmosphere? And then it's just like cut off, open, close, depending on where you are in the song. Resonance re usually down. A little bit of feedback can help. And that's pretty much it. Like plucks are very, very simple to do to get them right and nail them. Is like a lot of fine adjustments, the length, the vibe, and of course also what you play. Channel EQ, just safety, low cut and a little bit of distortion really helps. And then reverb, Valhalla Vintage Verb, and we got here a delay, and that's that's it. Actually, now thinking about this sound, I love it, but I think it needs another layer. Let's just copy it, because I'm, I'm missing, like, it's a plug in a way, but it's a very soft, washed out one, which is cool for this kind of song. But I think I need something that is more, has like the attack, I'm still missing the attack a little. This preset right here is really cool. Yeah, it's really just about the decay. Like, cut the decay and you, you got your plug kind of sound. Thanks for the question. <laughs> Because now I added on that more washed out plug, the more attacky plug, and I think that layer actually helps a little. I'll think about it. The song, yeah, again, it's like almost, almost, almost finished. Like maybe some automation here and there, some effects, but the, the general vibe is there. Uh, vocal needs to be replaced. But yeah, back to some more questions. Uh, Sustained Music is asking, what do you think of the spear by Misha Jacobi? Okay, if you don't know, Misha Jacobi is like a studio designer, builder, acoustician, and he built the studio of Dennis Koju that I already visited. He also built the Martian Forework studio that I already visited, both really cool, like spacey in a way. And he is building like a table that promises that you put it in any kind of room and it will, at least at the sweet spot, correct the frequency response 100%. And the speakers are like built into that. It looks cool, it looks fancy, it looks promising. I haven't tested it, so I don't know what to think about it. Like in theory, it sounds good. In practice, you'll have to test it, listen for yourself. I personally think room acoustic, building a proper studio like this with a lot of isolation is still the way to go. But once I have the chance to test it, I'll let you know. Why don't you live stream a DJ vinyl set? Who I haven't, like vinyl? Come on. I used to be really, really good DJing with vinyl every weekend, two gigs, but I haven't done it in 10 years. So I would need to train at least a month, like vinyl DJ sets, that's like just beat matching is already hard. Whiteheart is asking how to stay motivated. Honestly, I think you shouldn't think about how to stay motivated. If you really love it, then you'll be motivated. Yes, there are ups and downs and, and things that throw you back, but if you really love it, your, your initial motivation, your love for whatever you do is bigger. So for example, I had management, big deals, everything failing, lawyers, like big shit, big shit happening, but it never demotivated me because there was like this bigger goal of just like being creative, making music and sharing it with everyone. So. I never felt like needing any kind of motivation. And, and I think that's like the biggest driving force in my life. If, if it's different for you and it's a hustle and, and you're just frustrated nonstop constantly, 
And even thinking about what will happen in the future if you keep on doing what you're doing and you still feel that way, then maybe it's not the right thing for you. Vincent is asking how to record only the reverb signal of any sound and not with the source signal of that sound. That's fairly simple. Just put the reverb on a bus and record the bus or just put the reverb on wet 100% and, and you got just the reverb. Very simple. Would you trade your output gear for anything from Universal Audio? Uh, no. Never. Quick demo of how the live show is going. Still working on it. It's it's a lot more complicated, but um, I hope this year that I'll be ready to actually play on stage. Best analog synthesizer for 500 or less. Um, everything by Behringer, actually. They recreated a lot of like old classic synthesizers. They're amazing, especially for the price. And that's it. Thanks a lot for the question. If you're interested to ask me anything, I'll try to answer. Just check out my Instagram. It's linked down below in the description. And tomorrow, back again here in the studio, making, making more music. Baby.